In the middle of Irvine is a place that makes games. Too many to mention, I can't name all the names. Where hundreds of people were called through the day, at a magical place they call Interplay. But come quarter's end near the time of good cheer, a time that brings joy, but it also brings fear. A time to scream and yell and throw things about. The time was it coming to get Christmas games out. As producers would scurry and marketing sweated, not to mention the Christmas video which the sound team regretted. This year-end stampede would cause a resources mess that would soon find a way to funnel down to IS. Now Nathan had been through this year in and year out, but this year he'd snap, as we soon will find out. For that fateful day came a call from Eleni that the network had gone down just one time too many. Nathan yelled and he cursed and he tore a picture of Brian and he knew he'd go postal without even trying. To keep his poor mind from going to pieces, I've got to find a way to stop all the Christmas releases. But how to achieve such a hideous plot? Well, he sat and he thought, and he thought quite a lot. Then suddenly he grinned and he said without pause, I'll come the next morning disguised as Santa Claus. But he'd need an accomplice, someone trusted and liked. So he ran back inside and he grabbed poor old Mike. Now Mike should be smarter, knowing this was bad for us all. But working against him was a brain, two sizes too small. Now true to his word, the next morning they came, and they used Jesse's fob so he'd take all the blame. But they didn't know, in a room not too far, working that weekend were the girls from HR. Their first stop was QA as they broke in like thugs where they took all the revs and the lists of the bugs. And just to be mean, they took Tester's snacks. The snowballs, ding-dongs, pork grinds, and cracker jacks. You're a mean one, Mr. Rennick. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a keyboard, as user-friendly as Linux, Mr. Rennick. Why I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot net cord. Then off they headed to Raid Building 5, where they took all the source code. Each computer was fried. But as they were leaving, they were secretly spotted by Tamra, who worried, and her stomach got knotted. She quickly attempted to call Fargo at home, but he was out on his boat, not equipped with a phone. She panicked and quickly ran out to the lot, but unfortunately slipped on a big old spot. As she lied there in pain, the two thieves both looked back, and their only response was a big laugh attack. Not caring at all, their cover's been blown. They ran off to the lobby, but were not there alone. As they stuffed the company tree down into a sack, they heard a small whimper, and they turned to look back. Standing behind them, with a look of great fear, was little Gina Lou, who, from her eye, came a tear. Santa, why are you taking all the stuff that we need? The marketing ads, the source code, and even the tree. Now Nathan thought for a second, and he thought up a lie. It was Mikey's idea. If I didn't help him, he would cry. Now to Mike, this big lie was just the last straw, and he made a quick turn to make a run from it all. But a piece of old wire got stuck on his pocket, and he tripped and he fell, shoving his finger into a socket. When the others arrived, they found Mike was all glowing. But he emerged from this shock as someone all-knowing. For ask all who saw what had happened, they'll say, that Mikey's small brain grew three sizes that day. Mike quickly decided not to run, but instead that the best thing for Nathan was a blow to the head. So he grabbed an old board that once was a shelf, and he hit Nathan so hard, he awoke his old self. Now come Monday morning, when all had returned, the place was fixed up as if no stone had been turned. Now Mike and the others put this secret to bed, and Nathan knew nothing but had a huge bump on his head. So come Christmas morning, all over the globe, where interplay games with small faces aglow. And back home in Irvine, with cash registers ringing, 
were happy employees who spent the day singing. Praise God, 